What's up guys? Uh, in this video I want to share some um, insight I had into using um, actor components uh, which uh, I used for a sound setup that I worked on recently. Uh, so for this particular one uh, I'm just going to play it first so you can get an idea of what uh, it is. I hope that uh, was something you could hear. Okay, so it's a little bit loud and I don't have any attenuation or anything on them so they are kind of uh, maybe a little bit too um, too much anyway. Uh, but that's kind of the idea of uh, what I set up here. So I also want to give a big shout out to um, Bartosz Kaminski, which uh, provided the rock sounds and uh, the basic ideas behind this, or a lot of um, really nice input on, on this. Uh, cool work. Uh, I really love uh, what you came up with. Uh, so some of the ideas uh, are really based on his input, really. So a uh, big thumbs up to him. Um, but let's go into the actual setup of this. So currently, they all make the sound, uh, same sounds, uh, and that is kind of um, assuming that this uh, surface here is a rock surface uh, they are landing on, but they could be any type of uh, surface, really. So inside the audio folder here, I have a folder called Object Types, um, which basically has a impact material lookup data table. Um, so for this, I have a small rock, I have a rifle, I have a grenade. So these uh, names out here imply what type of object that you are throwing or uh, impacting. Um, and they each point to their own uh, impact data table again. So for each impact here, you will see, uh, for example, for the grenade, that will be an impact sound um, currently just set to the same rock sound because I uh, just wanted to demonstrate the idea behind this. Um, but it will basically look up the material or the surface that it lands on. So you can see I have one, two, three, and apparently 33. Uh, but these um, surface types, they uh, refer to the physical materials that you can set up inside the, um, the default uh, physics setup in here. So these surface types here. So you could call this, uh, for example, um, concrete, and you can call this grass, and you can call this, uh, you know, sand, uh, snow, whatever. Come up with your own names uh, for these, and then you can make the same names over here. Um, so just make sure that the names here in the surface um, are not safe. I think they save automatically. Hmm. Anyway, uh, might be just because I need to. Well, oh, okay, now we have them. Concrete, sand, grass, whatever. Um, yeah, that's pretty neat because I apparently always set them up. Okay, cool. Um, but then here you can see I have an impact one, impact two, impact three, and impact four. Uh, and these sounds here, they are uh, varying um, intensities of each of the sounds. So I just have this one example here, really. Um, but this is just playing one of these uh, at random. And then two is sounding like this. And three is kind of this. And you get the idea. Four is uh, really... Well, it's the same. Okay. Um, so inside the impacts, we have a, this is where it becomes really, really neat because I have a rock here. And if we open up the blueprint for the rock, you will see that it is basically a static mesh. Uh, so if I just do like this and, oops. Uh, well, it's still st just a static mesh. And now you can hear they don't make any sound anymore. Uh, so in order to get them to make sound, 
I'm, I'm adding this VP impact sound component, this one. So if you select it and you can set uh, the impact, what am I, uh, what would I consider myself as? I would like to consider myself uh, one of these types here, like a small rod. And then uh, that's basically all you need to do. And then they will make the sound. And that is really, really cool, I think. Uh, it just occurred to me how um, more easy this makes my life when I'm you know, making all these sounds here because I just basically need to make them uh, in one bass class and it will generally just propagate up to all the child classes I have. Uh, so inside the BP sound <clears throat> uh, thing here, uh, it, it very simple also, uh, it consists of a begin play, it gets the component of the static mesh. So if it doesn't have a static mesh, this will not be valid and the rest of the stuff here will not be valid, obviously. So uh, none of this stuff will happen if you don't have a static mesh. Uh, so, so this is very important to have. Do check your things, make sure that you do have a, a valid uh, output of this. Otherwise you won't be able to bind this, it will throw a, a, um, an error. Uh, then this begin uh, play turn on sounds, this is referring to this one and just gives it a little bit delay because physics objects sometimes um, don't you know, sometimes they initially start with something they do weird things so i had this uh, little initial uh, delay where i don't want to place any sounds you can ignore this really uh, so this one is getting the impact object type that is the um, the impact object type this is the uh, enum that i uh, i showed in the beginning uh, getting the uh, small rock or rifle or whatever and then it will get the corresponding impact sound data which is the um, the list that contains the um, definition of uh, how this object would sound uh, and refers to small rock in this case for the small rock this table here so obviously you, you will need to set these things up individually and it may seem like a lot of work and it is, it's a lot of work. Um, but I haven't, it, it can be, it, it's kind of, you have to do the same thing four times uh, with this setup here. But uh, I made a simple uh, tag, which will just allow you to set uh, one of these sounds here, just impact one and then it will just scale the sound accordingly. So um, that is what this simple tag is about. So if I just uh, select this one and check this one, you can hear it sounds a little bit different. Uh, let's do it again. And if I turn it off, so it uses the complex or more elaborate model sounds like this okay um, so inside the um, on component hit because what it does here it's binding this on component hit event uh, it is getting the hit out of this I'm doing a check here um, which uh, I copied from my VR project that I'm working on uh, it did say if this is a BP uh, motion control, then ignore everything because I was getting some hits. So you can just ignore this part here. Uh, but then it gets the component velocity and the hit component velocity and subtract the, the two from each other. And that will result in a vector. Um, so th that means that if some the object that it's hitting is moving in the same direction as the object hitting it, it will make less noise than uh, if it was um, stationary, you know. And if they are moving towards each other, obviously the difference is going to be higher and then it will make more sound. Uh, and this check here uh, is just to make sure that if it has a minimum of 20 whatever, uh, then it will not make any sound at all. And just you can set this all uh, away further down but it seems to work pretty good for me okay uh, and then we have do once uh, and 
this one contains some stuff we're going to get back to. Here you can see I played sound, attenuation and concurrency settings, which I also carry in. So on the rock in this example, and see I can set them to something. Uh, I don't have anything right now, but you can just feed them in and then we'll reset here. Uh, and then I have a random float in range just to give it a little bit of variation. And you could technically also expose these as uh, parameters. So you can define per object how often do you want to have sounds to be playing for these. Uh, so the get impact sound is the funny one here, um, I think. Uh, it will take the length, which is technically the speed, and the physical material that it hits, uh, which is getting in from here. In the hit result and it will um, return a sound uh, actually I made a tool tip for it based on this blah 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 it will return the sound on an optional uh, volume modifier so if we double click this and you can see I made this pure so I don't have the execution pin that's kind of neat uh, and but to begin with it's going to look up the correct data table um, yeah, uh, because it uh, that is kind of what we need to begin with. Um, so based on the physical uh, material, it's going to get the surface casted to a name and then look up that data table row. Um, and if it doesn't find anything, it will use this surface type default. So this is really, uh, if you haven't seen this stuff before, go check out how to work with data tables. They are really, really powerful. You can do a lot of interesting stuff with it. Um, comment in the video if you need me to do a short video on how to use them and you know how they basically work uh, I'd be happy to do that but as you can see here I uh, ex um, pick the impact sounds here based on a value which is coming from the speed so the speed here is uh, I use 200 that seems to work pretty good I have the 20 which was the minimum I picked and then you can see I have a range of 0 to 3. And these represent uh, 1 to 4, uh, the indices 1 to 4 for the sounds. But because uh, the arrays are 0 based, uh, it's going to be 0 to 3. And then I round this up and I uh, pick the appropriate sound from that. If I use simple, I always select 0. So that is why I have this one. And the same goes for the Oh, which I forgot to hook up, by the way. <laughs> um, that one may be why it sounded weird with the symbols. Okay, great. Um, so let's try, I can just try that with simple again and see if it makes a difference. Mm, hard to tell. Um, I think so. Great. Um, but anyway, this is taking a range of. Um, uh, 200 to 400 I can't remember why I got these and you can see I scaled them up a little bit um, I think it was because I wanted to get uh, at least a, a volume of one but possibly two uh, but no never higher than that so you can see I used clamped map to range as clamped um, uh, this, these are something you can tweak on yourself as well, uh, but kind of makes sense to not go below zero, I think, uh, uh, not all the way down to zero, um, because that means that they will sometimes never make a sound. Um, but maybe one is too much, maybe 0 0.5 and 1.5 would be better. You can test this out yourself. Yeah, you can basically see what I've done here. Uh, and it, the simple one is also using uh, 22 mapping the uh, 2200. Uh, you can, by the way, you can see it's opposite here this time here because the m more uh, speed it has, uh, the higher the volume is. Um, and actually, uh, this should be something like 0 0.1. It should at least make a little bit sound if it ever gets the uh, to 20 speed and then it's going to return this stuff here and that is really all there is to it uh, i mean the super powerful thing i would say is the begin play stuff where you can bind 
uh, an event just like that so you can basically react to uh, an event happening on another component in this case the static mesh component so i'm reacting on something happening on this but inside this so i have the all the implementation taken out of the whatever so it's super easy that way you know to create um things very fast and not have to hook things up and you know uh, pull things out and reconnect things uh, so i hope this makes sense uh, at least so anyway um comment in the video if you have questions um i can't share this uh with you guys uh, because it has both the rocks which um and marketplace assets and it has uh, the sounds which are uh, made by Batash and um yeah some other stuff which are also marketplace stuff so oh, a lot of this stuff is really uh, yeah uh, infected with marketplace stuff but the general setup here I, sh I i actually showed you and you should be able to create them um these you know uh, should be possible to to make yourself the physical surface sound bases uh just regular structs um data tables which you should also be able to make yourself um enums uh again data tables um, structs data table bah, bah. it's very it's generally uh using basic stuff um and i guess um yeah if you have trouble um creating this yourself I guess I can export or make these uh, four folders available. They don't have anything um, um, copyrighted or anything in them. Uh, but the sounds and uh, oh yeah, and the blueprint itself I can uh, share. No, no worries. Um, but it will not work obviously without the sounds uh, and the setup. So sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, thank you for watching and hope this was useful. Bye.